Ladies and gentlemen, this is the very unpredictable Matt Hardy, and you're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. Be prepared, because like Matt Hardy, In Your Head is very unpredictable. Welcome to In Your Head Wrestling Radio. I'm the internet icon, the pride of the pilgrims, handsome Jackie Jones, and I'm joined by one-third of the Ring of Honor six-man tag champs from the kingdom, Vinny Marcellia. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Uh, not very good. We get a cold, but hey, I'm good. I'm happy to be talking to you. <laughs> but I was it. I was there in person to see you win the uh, the titles. Oh, you were in Lowell. All right, cool. Yeah, that's good awesome. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, a great show. Team. Great yeah, crowd. Awesome. Yeah, it's a good building to see wrestling. Uh, I always like the ones that have like the, the balconies, I like the old ECW. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, have that arena effect to it. Yep. Yeah. Because I was up in the balcony, and it was like the perfect seating. Yep, and I had about 100 balloons holding the ceiling up. <laughs> I was going to ask that. Do you think those balloons are still there? Because I was watching them. I was like, I don't know how anyone could ever get these down until they just uh, <laughs> went out of the air. <laughs> no, nah, they probably fell up by now, but it was pretty cool visual. <laughs> oh, definitely. Definitely. So, uh, just like me, a fan of uh, horror movies and wrestling, I assume, growing up. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Um, pretty much my mom, my mom was a huge horror fan. Uh, and that's how I, I got into it at a very young age. Um, we would watch all the different, like, you know, the older, like, 80s, like, creep shows and the Friday the 13th and the Halloweens. And uh, we'd always watch them together, you know. She'd always have to, like, yeah, it's because I was afraid at first. I was very young. And, uh, you know, she'd always have to tell me, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's not real. It's not real. Um, but I always loved him, you know what I mean? Even if I was afraid of him, I always want to watch him. Uh, so, you know, it started at a very young age. My mom's a huge horror fan. We love the same horror films. So she kind of got me, uh, you know, to fall in love with that stuff. So ever since, um, you know, myself, my wife's very big into it. We have, uh, a ton of like horror movie props, uh, screen new stuff in our home. It's kind of like a, like a little horror museum actually in our house. So, you know, I loved it forever. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. I love, well, especially all like the older stuff. Yeah. That's uh, you know, even, know. Even the cheesy yeah. ones. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, uh, to me, it's like, uh, as long as I enjoy it, it kind of depends what mood you're in. You can watch, like you said, kind of cheesy stuff. Really hardcore, gory stuff. What uh, for me anyway? Whatever's cool. Right, right. Uh, and oddly enough, my I will I, I start watching horror movies with my mom. A creep show is the first VHS tape she ever bought me. I still have creep it here in, is, in the acclaim show. Creep show is one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, one and two are great. I don't like three. I don't know why they bothered, but um, yeah, the creep show, the original creep show, is a fantastic movie. Do you have a favorite of the uh, of of the stories? Um, oh, that's a tough one. Um, jeez, ah, that that is a that's a good question. That is a very good question. Uh, I pretty um, much like I, them all, but there's something about the crate for me. Yeah, most people like the crate. Um, I. I I want to say either the Crate or the Father's Day. Either one of those two is probably my favorite. Um, Tied You Over is pretty good, though, with uh, Mr. Magoo there. So, uh, they're all good. Hold my breath for a long time. Yeah, they're they're both good. And then the second one, I don't know if you've ever seen the second one, but uh, the uh, I think the second one is Old Chief Wooden Head, probably my favorite one of that that one. So, mm-hmm. but uh, I kind of like yeah, the man, I like yeah, man, I, I like all those older movies and like the the ones that like the hidden the killer clowns from out of space is a great one that made my wife you know it's one of those bad movies that you love to watch. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, you know all those all those older ones are great. Mm-hmm. And uh, how about uh, wrestling? Was that was that something your mom was into too? Or yeah, uh, actually my my aunt. Uh, my aunt is the one who first got me into it. Uh, but we would all go, my mom was like a big Shawn Michaels fan, like when she was younger. And, uh, we, we'd all go, uh, basically we'd all go to the, uh, 
Providence Civic Center, it was called at the time, where mm-hmm. I'm from, here in Rhode Island, um, the whole entire family would go. So it'd be like me, my aunt, my mom, uh, my dad, uh, my uncle, my cousins. God, we'd all go as like a huge clan uh, to the Dunkin' Donuts Center. We'd always, every single uh, live event, house show, whatever it was, we'd always be there. So uh, I, my family was uh, big into wrestling when I was growing up. And, uh, you know, I, I just fell in love with it, man. It was, just, it was just the coolest thing I've ever seen. You know, and, uh, I was a big uh, Ultimate Warrior fan when I was a little kid. I loved the Ultimate Warrior. I loved the Rockers, um, you know, when I was little. Uh, and then uh, when I became a teenager, you know, junior high, high school, you know, wrestling around with your buddies. Um, you know, I loved like uh, I loved the Hardys. Like the, 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 they were kind of like the the tag team that kind of made me like really want to start to you know you know definitely want to do this. Um, and you know, so yeah, absolutely. My 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 family was huge into wrestling growing up. Uh, not so much anymore. Um, but you know, my brother's still a big fan. You know, my brother. It's funny. My brother will always like text me. You know. Uh, you know, are you in the belt yet? And stuff like that. It's, it's, it's cool. It's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, my family was big into wrestling. Mm-hmm. So how did you go from uh, wrestling? When did you decide like you wanted to, to pursue this and uh, do this for a living? Um, God, it, it, I always kind of wanted to be a wrestler. You know, like, uh, like I go back to what I said, like, you know, going to those live events and stuff. Uh, it was always, I loved it, and I just like the like going to those live events and just God, I just I was like, this is what I want to do. So, um, you know, once once I got you know I I got a little older and stuff, uh, junior high, high school, you know, you wrestle around your buddies on the trampoline or you know whatever it is, backyard wrestling. Um, and then when I when I hit high school, like later in high school, there was a girl there who's. Um, boyfriend was involved in some local independent promotion or whatever it was and uh they were training on one night and he, he said hey you want to you know come and check it out so i'm like 16 17 years old oh, 17 years old going on 18 i believe and um this is in Pawtucket, rhode island and uh i i've never been at the time i've never been there been inside a pro wrestling ring so i went there and checked it out and just kind of sat and watched uh, but, um, when I got in there, I just, they just let me kind of like walk around and there. they didn't really like, you know, cause it's too dangerous for me to actually do anything. So I just kind of went in there and, you know, got the feel for it. Um, and man, it was awesome. I fell in love. It was the coolest thing. I was like, wow, I'm actually like in a wrestling ring now. It's pretty awesome. You know, so 17, 18 years old. I'm like, yeah, this is, this is like, I, I've been, I've been dying to stand in one of these, you know? <laughs> um, so uh, from there on out, I kind of trained their train, quote unquote, um, just kind of get some ring ring experience there. Um, you know, so I was like half training at the time, kind of doing like, I started doing some local stuff in like Rhode Island area, you know, just some random shows, whatever I could get on, um, which then led me to like Fairhaven VFW is like up in the Massachusetts area started doing that kind of locally. And then I ran to uh, Spike Dudley um, at one of the events and um, Ryan Waters, who is currently training at the Spike Dudley lockup school, which I'll get into in a minute. Um, but basically I was wrestling at, at these VFW shows um, and they were like, uh, you know, Spike and Ryan are basically like, you know, you have a lot of potential. Um, would you like to come and, you know, train at my school and stuff? I could, I could really like, you know, kind of break you down and build you back up and, you know, show you what I've learned over the years. So at first I was kind of like, you know, when you're in new situations, you, you kind of get intimidated, you know, especially at a younger age or kind of like, you know, so I started training with Spike like 22 turned 23. Um, and so eventually, you know, it took me a while. Taven had already been there a year ahead of me, actually. And he was trying to get me to go because, you know, he was like, you know, this stuff's great. You know, you'd be blown away by the, all the knowledge that Spike has. So I was a little bit intimidated going into it, but eventually I cracked. I went to Spike's and, you know, like Taven said, you know, I was, I was blown away at like the knowledge that was, that, that he was like, 
thrown at me. I was like, wow, this is unreal. I actually don't know anything. <laughs> um, so, cause it basically, uh, I went there by my, my other buddy, Matt, and, um, they, it's like, there's just kind of like, show me what you got. And then we're done. It was kind of like, yeah, you know, you guys don't know anything. <laughs> so he had to like, build us, break us down, build us back up, um, correctly. Um, and it was, it was awesome. It was a, it was a great experience. I was so happy that I made the move to Red Spikes. You know, I'm grateful for everything he's taught me, especially Ryan too. Ryan orders, um, like I said, is still currently, uh, training at that school. It's called the Lockup Academy located in Fall River, Massachusetts. Um, Ryan, um, was Spike's assistant at the time. And then Spike eventually had left when we were still there and Ryan had taken over and Ryan is another, um, he's incredible at what he does in the ring. Um, he's, he's a, he's a hidden gem over here in the Massachusetts area and, uh, he still currently runs the school. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's how the journey kind of started. And then like, uh, you know, once they started doing a lot of stuff with Spike and training with Ryan and, uh, doing a bunch of local shows, uh, you know, and top row promotions was pretty much my home base at the time, uh, which had myself, uh, Cave and uh, Bennett was there. Um, Tommaso was there. We we had a lot of guys um, kind of helping each other out on the scene during the time, like uh, of all of us coming up. It was pretty cool. Um, but so, that's how it all started. So uh, were you friends with Matt Taven then before uh, you went to wrestling school? Uh, yeah. So we met like right before he 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 went to the spike. So we've been we've been friends now for about ten years. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe uh, over ten years, maybe like uh, yeah, probably like ten or eleven years now. So uh, and and he, we were both we both kind of met up when we were doing like random like independent wrestling shows locally. Uh, we were both kind of like half training at the time, but he had went to Spikes a year before me, and then he was trying to get me to go, and then eventually I cracked and went. So but uh, uh, yeah, I've known him for a very long time. Yeah, uh, I've you know I'm I'm from Massachusetts, so I saw Matt Taven. Uh for years, you know, in the independent scene. And it was, uh, it's really cool to see him, uh, really come into his own. I remember he's kind of doing yeah, the yeah. kind of gimmick and, uh, uh, he's really improved a lot, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. He's great, man. He's, he's great. He's one of the best. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's cool to kind of like, you know, being able to like travel the world with him and stuff is, is, is pretty awesome. You know what I mean? Just because like from where we started to now, it's like kind of, it's kind of wild how like we ended up like you know he's done so much when i was uh, trying to uh try to you know still continue to work and uh trying to get somewhere and he, and he was still doing so much at the time but it's kind of cool how like you know we only started we kind of like you know met up again and you know now we're like part of the kingdom together it's, it's pretty yeah. cool yeah how did the how did your version of the kingdom like come together like whose idea was that uh, basically Taven, uh, Taven, you know, had, had, uh, wanted to rebuild the kingdom in his own image and, uh, picked myself and TK. Now TK, uh, came from the school as well later, years later. So Ryan, uh, who was Spike's assistant trainer at the time, who also had a hand in training us, um, ended up being TK's trainer years later. Um, so that's TK comes from the same training. Um, and it's, it's just like the chemistry is very natural, man. Cause like, you know, we're, we're all friends. Um, we're all real friends, you know, outside of, uh, of the ring, you know, some people aren't, you know what I mean? In those situations. So, uh, the chemistry is very natural for us because we're, we're, uh, we're good friends outside of it. So, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, it was basically just Haven's idea. You know, he wanted to rebuild the kingdom in his own religion. Uh, we were handpicked by him to, to be involved. So, and it just, uh, it just has a, like I said, it has a very natural, uh, feel to it, a very natural thing. So, and even yeah. with us being so individually different, um, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're very much different. Um, uh, it still has this, uh, you know, natural, uh, feel to it, you know, and it's cool. I think it's great that, that we're all individually different. You know, that's, that's, I think that's what makes it special. You know what I mean? Yeah, the chemistry really came through. I was watching some of your videos last night of, uh, like, you guys search for the ring and then uh, uh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. some stuff with the boys. and, and <laughs> it was, yeah, uh, I got a really kick out of it. It was good stuff, yeah. Yeah, 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 they were fun. Mm-hmm. 
And I even mentioned you're traveling the world. You got have the UK tour coming up. Have you been to England before? Uh, have you wrestled England before? I actually never have. This will be my first time being there. So I'm, I'm really excited for it. It's going to be awesome. There's some great matches like lined up. The entire show looks fantastic. I'm, I'm really excited to be a part of that. I, I've always wanted to, you know what I mean? And now that I finally mm-hmm. am, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be such, I'm grateful for that. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Now, when you go to like a... Especially being there, especially going over there as a, you know, two-time uh, six-man tag champs. That's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, when you go to a different country, do you uh, take uh, that opportunity to uh, see the country itself, too? Yeah. We, I mean, we try to. We try to. I try to do that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, when, whenever I can, I, I tend to, I love, uh, you know, since I love horror movies, I, I, uh, I love to like, <laughs> look up uh, filming locations for different horror films yeah. and seeing uh, where different, like, so, so I looked up a couple of, uh, you know, uh, American World and London locations, so like or in London, just to see if I can kind of get to one of those, that'd be pretty awesome. But yeah, wherever we go, like, I like to, you know, kind of find out what, um, different you know locations in horror films that we can mm-hmm. go to so yeah, absolutely and that's always been like a, a cool thing <laughs> mm-hmm. still the best transformation scene ever i would say is uh, american werewolf from london yeah it's kind of uh it, it's a it's a tie um because the howling had a very yeah. good one too and from the same um, year but, oddly enough <laughs> but i think um I think John Landis, like the American Will for London, will always kind of be, you know, more popular than the Howling. But the Howling, you got to kind of, I think you got to be like a really like big horror fan to really know. Some people don't even know the Howling exists, you know. Mm-hmm. But in American Will for London, I think majority people that aren't even like that cult following of horror is like outside of it. They they know that movie exists. So I think like you know, American Will for London kind of wins. But uh, I think. Personally, I think it's kind of like a, a close tie because, you know, the Halloween transformation is very creepy. I remember when I was younger that transformation used to scare the hell out of me, but um, American Oil for One is, is, is an awesome one. So, yeah, so that's a location I'm trying to, a couple locations, uh, you know, there's the alleyway there, there's, you know, Piccadilly Circus and all that other stuff that, like, you know, I'm hoping, you know, to get the chance to see, you know, but it's not you know, no big deal. Um, but you know, it's always cool to kind of like, I always like to look wherever state we're in. We just went to, um, um, when we just came from Pittsburgh, like a couple of weeks back and, uh, I went to the night of the living dead, um, cemetery, the original one mm-hmm. and the 1990 remake with Tom Savini, which is my favorite zombie movie of all time was the 1990 remake of the night of the living dead. I'm not huge into zombie films. I do love um, those and they're living dead, uh, the original and the remake, but the remake is my favorite. And we went to like the farmhouse and the cemetery. So it's, it's pretty awesome. So I always like to look for different like horror locations or whatever yeah. I can find. Yeah. I, uh, the original Dawn of the Dead is my favorite, but uh, I do like the original. Yeah. Oliver and yeah. And, and the, yeah, that's yeah. one of the best remakes. So uh, of any like horror movies is the, uh, the remake of the original Night Lemon Dead. That's a really good film. Yeah, yeah, love it. Tony Todd, like, it was a fantastic film. I thought it was yeah. great. Yeah, and they, and uh, uh, Bill Mosley is uh, coming to get Bill Mosley's on. fantastic. Another, yeah, I, I actually, I'm a big fan of Bill Mosley's work um, and a lot of his films. And uh, I, I, you know, I love, uh, I love Rob Zombie films. I love his music. Uh, you know, I love Manson music. Or whatever. I love that whole like. You know, um, heavy metal stuff, but like, uh, yeah, I, I always, I was a big fan of Bill Bosley. I don't know, just like all of his, all of his roles, he just knocks it out of the park. It's pretty awesome, and uh, I'm pretty excited to see him in the Three from Hell, the new mm-hmm. film coming out by Zombies. It's gonna be pretty cool because I'm a huge, I love Devil's Rejects, so um, I'm looking forward to that too. Yeah, something about Bill Mosley is uh, he's able to play like when he's Chop Top, he's you kind of think of him like this weasley small guy, and then when he's Otis and the Devil's Rejects, you think of him as like this big imposing guy. And neither of them's really relying. Uh, I know he has makeup on, but it's really relying just him as an actor. And it's weird to think it's the same guy playing both parts because 
just physically, you see them as completely opposites. Right, right, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, he's he's great. He's great, and like he's the best. I, I mean, the best choice for Otis. You know what I mean? Like uh, the Otis character is great. I love the Otis character in the Devil's Rejects more than the House of the Thousand Corpses because <coughs> mm-hmm. it kind of went more. Uh, there's more realism to the Devil's Rejects, you know, uh, where, you know, a lot of the House of a Thousand Corpses is more like entity stuff. So, uh, but, you know, it was cool. Yeah, I'm, uh, I think that's his best movies, Devil's Rejects. Uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. I love the beginning with, with uh, Captain Spaulding. And then yeah, um, yeah. when it gets to the house. Fried it's chicken and gas. Yes. Fried chicken exactly. and gas. <laughs> And most of all, fuck you. But yeah, it's a uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the end with uh, with uh, Doctor Satan, but um, but Devil's Rejects yeah, is mo- great. Yeah, Devil's Rejects, fantastic movie. What were you gonna say about uh, Doctor Satan? Sorry, I just I wasn't a fan of that scene. Um, I think that, um, in my opinion, I don't know. I feel like sometimes that. Maybe or just to get Doctor Saint on screen, just because he's a character that, and you know, to be fair, a very popular character. He became like mm-hmm. when I go to like horror conventions or whatever, I always see that costume. Maybe somebody dresses as Doctor Saint or whatever it is. But uh, I think that you know it would have been cooler of her escaping in the bunny suit and then meeting up with Spalding at the end. That's just my opinion. But you know, obviously they wanted to get Doctor Saint in the film, so. I, I just think it was a kind of weird transition from. Yeah, it really the feels like world. a totally and, different. It feels like something from a totally yeah. different movie. Right, 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 right. To just go into this outside world down to down there where he was, it was just kind of like you know what I mean. There's just something about it that I wasn't a fan of, but the character is cool. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know where it was placed, I, I don't know. I, I just I just would have preferred her escaping. Yeah, it seems like a totally different universe. Really, uh... I think it would work right. in a totally different movie about about that kind of universe, but uh, yeah, me, or about Doctor Sane himself, you right. know, or something. But yeah, yeah, I, I'm sure you've seen the deleted scene of Doctor Saint in Devil's Rejects. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. that's it, like the it, hospital thing. Yeah, like it's cool to watch, yeah. but it definitely would have been uh, completely out of place. I think exactly. So it's weird because everyone talks about uh, Three from Hell. As the Devil's Reject sequel, you never really hear someone say it's the third uh, House of a Thousand Corpses movie, which I don't think like that ever happens in any other franchise. Yeah, I, and I think like you know, I'm just uh, you know, yeah, the Devil's Rejects has had it was such a powerful film, and I think it overpowered the House of a Thousand Corpses, and you know that end scene is pretty iconic. So you know, it just kind of it, it it left you with not now because of the three from hell is now to leave you with like, like oh they they didn't die or you know what's uh-huh. going to happen after that one you know what i mean so i think that's just kind of you know kind of kind of naturally happened because of the popularity of devil's rejects so mm-hmm. yeah and that one was really about those three those three characters yeah right yeah. right right so yeah i'm interested to see how they do it uh, i've interviewed sid haig and he said this was years ago he said that he would never do another one but I'm glad that they have because I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's awesome. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so, what were your uh, what were you said you weren't really a big uh, into zombie movies? Not Rob Zombie, but zombie movies. What were your favorite horror movies when you were growing up? Um. Well, we covered creep. Well, you mentioned so creep. Those show, are definitely. Yeah. yeah uh, but like the Halloweens, I was big into Friday the Thirteenth. I was big into. I loved. Um, God, I loved like a lot of like hidden stuff, like Night of the Demons and uh, Puppet Master, Dolls. Um, there was a lot of like of those like hidden ones that people, the Fun House. Many people don't know about that movie. That's a good one. Uh, but yeah. but it's a great one. Um, you know, people don't like. My wife kind of hates that movie. She doesn't hate it. She doesn't like it because she says she feels like it's too slow. But I think the Fun House is a fantastic movie um, because of the situation. You know. You know, like uh, at the at the at the fair, and like if you're you want to stay over in this like creepy fun house, and like you know, I think everybody at one point in their life is like, oh man, just like someone like 
you know, there's a killer in this fun house and like, you know, we stayed here. You know what I mean? It just has that vibe of like, well, this is probably something that people have thought of. Like, you know, so it's, it's I like it. I think it's a great movie. Um, my all time favorite movie period is the lost boys. Um, I have, uh, we have actually like three of the jackets from the movie, like in shadow boxes in our home. Um, so that's my all time favorite, but I like, uh, fright night one, two, um, it's just like the child's plays, um, all those like, eight, you know, those older, you know, horror films. Um, you know, I love, I love all those. So pretty much anything that you put in front of me from that, that, that era in horror, you know, I love it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, well, that's, my favorite, right, bro. yeah, right. I mean, my favorite horror slasher is that's like the lost boys is kind of could be like a horror comedy, depending on who you ask. And, uh, but my favorite slash would be the original Halloween. Um, I love Halloween three people hate it, but if you give it, the, if you just, if you just watch the season of the witch and not part of, then mm. you don't think part of like Michael Myers of the series. Um, it's actually, it's a really good movie, but people just hate it because, no you know, it was after Michael Myers, they're mad. He wasn't in it, you know, whatever. But if you just kind of like take your four years on its own, like it's actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always like. I always love singing the song as a kid. You know, eight more days all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of sticks with you. So the Shamrock song. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A, qu- uh, a cheap plug for myself, uh, since you like the Lost Boys. I in- recently interviewed Tim Capello, who's the the saxophone player. Oh yeah, from, the sax uh, player. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's on my uh, resume. Nice horror. Guy, actually, he is. He's awesome. Yeah, I actually uh, talked with him a little bit about the movie uh, when I was doing uh, yeah. one of the horror conventions or whatever. Um, and he's actually a really great guy. He's a very nice guy. And, uh, you know, he is cool. Cause he still had like the whole, you know, the whole stick on and everything yeah, that he wore yeah. and he had the sacks and like, he was just, he was fun about it, man. It was cool. It was mm-hmm. cool to see that. It was, it was real cool. Yeah. Yeah. Was that rock and shock maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Rock and shock. It's a good convention. So I saw that you actually are in a movie, uh, the find. Yeah, um, the find. It was actually, you know, it's funny. The uh, the trailer was supposed to come out yesterday, but then they contacted me and said they had to make some adjustments to like sound or whatever that they weren't happy with fully. So I'm kind of waiting for it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, the find. Uh, it, it was awesome doing that. That was fantastic. It was a, that's another that was another like kind of like dream of mine. You know what I mean? To kind of have like this killer role in like a like an actual horror movie you know what i mean um so uh the director uh david gear is um he works with verdi productions out of rhode island who's a big uh production company who does a lot of filming that out of rhode island locations and stuff and um he's a big wrestling fan and you know he he loves you know the fact that i'm you know, big into horror. He loves the horror king. He loves all that stuff. And uh, he was just basically like, "Hey, I, you know, you, we love your look, and we, we'd like you to, you know, be a part of this horror film as the killer. And uh, do you mind if I send you the script?" And uh, you know, I was like, "Of course not. Like, send it over. You know what I mean? I love this stuff." So, uh, you know, like it wasn't like a. I didn't have to think about it. He didn't have to probably send me the script. Was, you know, once he said horror movie could be a killer, and I was like, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I read the script. It was fantastic. Uh, it's basically about a, an old uh, ancient Indian tribe who uh, where this character, Damon, that I play, who's the killer, is in search of this ring um, that's from the, the times of this ancient uh, Indian tribe. Um, and it's at this house in this random like mansion house in the middle of Chester, Connecticut. And and there's a a study room with a lot of like ancient Indian uh, tribe, like stuff that belonged to them, like headwear, whatever you name it. And uh, that's where I kind of have the feeling that this ring is. So I can, I have like the sense that this ring is like, I'm trying to locate it. And I have a sense that it's in this house and and it is, but at the same time, um, this house is being rented out by a bunch of college kids on a winter break. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you can guess what happens there. I show up at the house and I kind of, you know, in search of the ring, kind of run into these kids one by one. Um, so it, it's really cool. It kind of had like a, uh, like 
uh, kind of like maybe like a scream vibe to it. You know what I mean? Like if it had like, uh, if that, if, if, if the scream killer was involved with some sort of ancient tribe, Indian tribe, like, I guess it could be related to that, but, uh, it was awesome to do. I was there for like over, over a week, like two weeks, uh, filming, um, overnight, I was like a vampire, so I sleep all day and film throughout the night. Uh, it was fun though. It was a great time. It was, it was real cool. Um, and we still have two more days left, but the uh, the trailer should be should be out any day now. I'm just kind of waiting for them to correct whatever errors they wanted to and send it back. Um, but I'm excited. Yeah. Cool. I, I look forward to seeing the trailer. I'll put up on the. A horror site. If you yeah, like. I got a glimpse of it all already, and it was uh-huh. just, it was fantastic. So I'm just kind of waiting, but yeah. Do you know where what will happen uh, with the movie after that? It's going to do like festivals, or it's going to go to the video demand or DVD. Uh, DVD. Uh, I believe DVD, Netflix, um, <laughs> all that stuff. Um, they're going to have like a premiere, I believe, in Connecticut, Rhode Island. Um, I believe that, you know, where you could buy a ticket to as well. Um, so that, all that info will eventually come out. I'll, I'll end up putting it up myself as well. Um, but I believe, I, I want to say the release date for it that was said was Halloween. So Halloween night is supposed to be the release date of it. So yeah, could change, but that's, that's kind of like the talk. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, but what do you do normally for Halloween? Um, at this point, I take my daughter out. <laughs> uh, she's three. She actually loves it. Um, she loves Halloween. She loves like uh, we go to Salem too, and she she loves like she loves seeing the you know all the different like horror monsters and stuff like that. It's kind of cool because it kind of it reminds me of me when I was a kid. Um, you know, with my mom in that sense of you know us kind of liking that together and like you know because my wife loves it too. So it's kind of hard to like you know get around it you know what i mean mm-hmm. so she's kind of like around it all the time and uh you know she she loves it she thinks it's she thinks it's great she you know she knows frankenstein she knows dracula <laughs> she knows you know freddie jason she knows all of them so she's only three <laughs> um but she knows the different characters because like you know we have like the different masks and like shadow boxes and glass cases at our home so you know obviously she's going to get used to like who they are and uh so it's cool, you know, we, yeah, Halloween, Halloween's cool, so, like, we'll do a bunch of stuff, we'll go to Salem, and then, you know, we'll obviously we'll go trick-or-treating uh, down where, you know, a couple neighborhoods down, like, where I grew up, and, uh, you know, she, she loves it, so that's, that's what we do on Halloween, we go trick-or-treating, um, awesome. but, uh, yeah, Salem's a good time, we always make it a point in October to go to Salem, because, um, you know, they have all, like, the, the Halloween, um, costumes and the walkthroughs and the count orlocks um walkthrough is fantastic and he has yeah. all like the movie props and stuff like that which is great and you can't take pictures in there that's a bummer but uh they got a lot of cool a lot of cool st- stuff in there statues and props it's pretty awesome yeah definitely it was the last year i did a walking tour in salem uh it was some more uh, the real stuff about like uh, where they where right they, the pat the witches they, and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. Which was really cool yeah time. yeah we, we we've done that like we did a walk through the witch house and stuff like that yeah that's pretty awesome stuff yeah and I usually do uh, this twelve hour horror movie marathon at the Coolidge uh, Corner Theater in uh, yeah, yeah. Brookline from midnight till noon the next day they always they do a twelve hour uh, horror movie marathon it's a good time if you could stay oh, awake nice. all twelve hours yeah. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Usually try to pick a movie you might not want to see take a nap during one of them. So right, right. Hours yep. So, uh, well, I love the knee pad. Uh, when when did you incorporate the, the Michael Myers knee pad? Oh, um, I've been doing it for a while now. Um, but, yeah, it's just kind of like, um, you know, it's a bunch of stuff on my on my on my stuff that I wear, uh, the knee pad, Michael Myers knee pad. I also got like a little Jason face on the other one. Um, you know, the Michael Myers one is probably the best part though. Their face just kind of sticks out and it's kind of, it was just kind of like, Oh, you know what looked cool? A Michael Myers face on my knee, you know, you know, I just thought it would be, you know, you know, cause I love that stuff so much. So I thought it'd just be cool to put on there. And then I have like, you know, the skeleton bodies hanging off my like kick pads on the bottom. 
um, you know, a bunch of different like hard patches and, and, uh, stuff that, that I love on there. So I just think, uh, yeah, it's, it's just one of those things that I've had it on there for a while. It's, people seem to love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every time, uh, yeah. every time we go somewhere, I, I always like, you know, can I get a picture of your knee pad? And I'm just like, yeah, sure. <laughs> You know, just make Michael Myers smile real quick. But it's uh, it's cool because you know it's um, whatever I need someone in the face or whatever it is. It's like Michael Myers giving someone a headbutt. So it's it's pretty rad. You know, it's pretty cool. I agree. Um, I like it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of you know wacky things that I do, but you know it's stuff that I want up to my end. So it's, it's is cool. there any is there any story behind the acts? Um. I just, I pick the axe. Um, I mean, because when you think traditional horror, you know, and The Shining and <laughs> even the even the original, like, you know, Friday the 13th, like, there's always an axe, you know? I felt like there's always an axe in, in, like, in some movie. Even Halloween 6, Michael Myers ends up with an axe. Oh, so, <laughs> in my mind, I was like, you know, I want to, I want to, um, start swinging the most iconic horror horror film, uh, you know, weapon at somebody. What would it be? You know, yeah, you know, I think an axe would be good. So I, I've always liked, like, you know, growing up, like, you know, the horror, the horror icon in whatever movie it would be, holding the axe. There's nothing like more frightening than an axe in one of those. You know what I mean? So it's uh, just one of those popular. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's always, you know, I thought the the axe is a good fit for the horror king. You know, it's just, it's one of those weapons that always kind of stuck in my mind growing up. So I think an axe would be perfect. Yeah. Is it already you know, last with? one there gets the axe. That's why, right. you know, that's my last one there gets the axe. Mm-hmm. Is it hard to travel with an axe? Uh, it's, it's on the, it's on the ring truck. So they keep okay. it on the ring truck. Um, <laughs> right. You're not bringing it yeah. to the planes and stuff. I no, 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 no. <laughs> I, uh, I had to, uh, bag check it once, um, and that you know that, that obviously goes on the bottom of the plane. Bag checked it once, and then ever since it's always just been on the truck. Uh-huh. Well, is it going to make its way to England? Uh, you know, I was thinking about that literally uh-huh. as we were just talking about it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I think I need to find a way to get it there, right? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It would yeah, right. seem not right. But. I mean, the axe has got to be in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can see it, like, getting stamped. I don't now, know. Like, yeah. I, might have to, I might have to check another one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know you have, the, you have the hockey mask, obviously. Do, do you have a favorite Jason? Favorite Jason? Um, geez. I like, there's a few of them that I like. So... I, I like Final Chapter Part Four with Corey That's Feldman. That one's a great one. Um, and I like um, I like Jason Lives uh, Part Six. I think C.J. Graham did a fantastic job as Jason. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, Kane Hodder I believe will always be the best Jason. But I think there's something about Jason Lives Part Six that I love. I don't know what it is, but I do like that one a lot as well. Um, and then you know, Part Seven's cool too. So I have a lot of you know, a lot of those, and those are just because, like, those are the ones I always saw when I was growing up. You know what I mean? So they kind of like stuck with me and were burned into my brain. So, uh, but I think probably the final chapter would be my overall favorite. Um, but uh, I also do like Jason Lives as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I personally like the uh, fourth is my favorite too. I I kind of like him when he's more of uh, the the hillbilly kind of guy in the woods as opposed to the zombie guy. But uh, you know, I'm kind of in the minority there, I think. Most people like the uh, the zombie Jason. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, you like, like, the uh, button-down shirt and, like... <laughs> yeah, 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 from, like, one to the, four, yeah. well, two to four, I guess, yeah. Right, I, right, I think, right, right. I think that number two Jason's uh, with the sack is uh, underrated. I know the hockey mask is iconic, but I kind of like the one I Right, sack, right. But, Right, yeah, no, he's. I mean, the the burlap sack is is. I mean, it's pretty creepy. So I mean, if if well, I mean, if they put it this way, if if, if they kept Jason with the burlap sack for all the other films, the burlap sack would be an iconic thing. You right, know what I mean? Right, so it's right. because like that that 
hockey mask was kind of like, all right, this is it. And just kind of kept doing it. You do it enough times, people are going to be like, okay, that's it. Right. That's, that's the thing. So, you know, and I think the burlap sign, I agree, was very creepy as well. So, so uh, the red balloons, obviously, uh, uh, Pennywise. Uh, how would you compare the uh, the It miniseries to the to the It from last year? Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, the, how would you compare Pennywise, uh, It Stephen King's It, uh, the original yeah. miniseries with uh, the, the newest film? Um, see, uh, growing up, I was never big into It. <laughs> okay. Um, and it's funny because like I come out with red balloons, right? So you think I'm a big hit, <laughs> right? Um, I, I just the red balloons uh, to me is uh, creepy symbolism. Uh, if it had it or he didn't have it, um, mm-hmm. there, there's a is lot it? of there's a few horror movies out there that actually have red balloons in it. Um, other than it, um, I I. I don't hate it. I enjoy it. I, I enjoy Stephen King. I think he's fantastic. Um, the The original, to me, I like the original because um, you're kind of like, you know, what, what's the deal with this? With the, you know, is this clown real? Is it, you know, and it's and it's creepy. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, who who played him in the uh, original? Oh, uh, I'm drawing a blank here. What's his name? Tim Curry. Right. Tim, Tim Curry. Curry yeah. yeah, Tim Curry was uh, played an awesome it. Uh, it. You know what? The new one too, though. Um, Scar's got there. I thought he was fantastic mm-hmm. too. You know, they're they're both good in their own way. Um, I like the original one just because I, I feel I feel like it was scarier um, to me, um, and still is like a scarier version of it. Um, the new one wasn't bad. My my wife actually loves the new film. Um, but you know, I kind of—I was never like huge into it. I love Stephen King, like Silver Bullet. I love that. I love uh, Pet Cemetery. I love those. Um, I'm never huge, huge into it. I like it. I don't hate it, but you know, wasn't my favorite Stephen King. Um, but the Red Balloons, you know, I just you know the Horror King coming out as part of the Horror King. Um, I just it's very natural for me. It was just an element from the horror genre, which you know would be considered it. Uh, to people that, you know, most people just think the red balloon horror is it. Um, mm. There's a lot of different variations of horror films out there that actually have the red balloon. Um, and I think there's a movie called Red Balloon. Um, but, you know, the the average person is going to think it regardless, so it doesn't matter. So I guess you could say that. But, you know, something about, you know, the symbolism of that, you know, and then just like having, you know, I always check under the ring and having the balloons mm-hmm. are released from under the ring. is kind of like a, it's a cool visual for the audience to kind of, you know, to kind of see. So, you know, wherever the horror king is, is red balloons, you know, and you look up at yeah. the ceiling and it's just red balloons filled up in the ceiling. You know, the horror king was here, you know, it's, it's cool. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, part you, of me, you know, it's, it's part like, of what I like, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know who you're uh, working with yet in England? Um, I, I know there's a we got a big tag team match, which is myself and TK uh, going against the Young Bucks. Um, uh, I'm going to say the Addiction, the Young Bucks, the Addiction. Oh no, no, it's a uh, God. What is that match? <laughs> it's it's us, the Young Bucks. The Briscoes and Evil and Sonata, I believe. Hmm. Uh, and then one was just announced where it was uh, the Kingdom, myself, Matt, and TK versus Dalton, Lethal, and Tanahashi. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of great matches, you know, and, and just even out, out the whole the whole show over there in the UK is just going to be fantastic with the the amount of talent they have on it. It's going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. You know, all the matches are going to be fantastic. You know, it's, and it's cool just to go over there and be able to perform in the UK. You know, I'm really excited for it. First time ever. So That's very cool. Now, I've never been in the UK myself. I'm going the first time in August, so I'm looking forward to that. Not to wrestle. Oh, cool, but, man. Yeah. It'll be at uh, yeah, no, Freight cool. Fest, the uh, horror festival there. Oh, uh, is there? What, what is, is, it, what, is that what it's called, Freight Fest? 
yeah, Fright Fest. It's uh, UK's biggest horror festival. You know, it's horror movies. Yeah, so, I yeah, know. I've cool. heard of it. Yeah, that, that's really cool. That's cool, man. You got to grab some cool pictures over there. That's great. Yeah, I'll be getting a bunch of interviews and stuff. So ah, that'll be a good time. Um, that's awesome. For, how how um, over the years since you've been in uh, independent wrestling, uh, do you feel like it's really grown in popularity over the, the last few years? Oh yeah, absolutely, man. I, I like. And like social media is like, you know, big, you know, a big part of that. Um, you know, like when we first, you know, started wrestling, you know, myself and like Taven, you know, and Bennett, we were all around the same time there. Um, social media wasn't nearly as big as it is now. So it's almost like, you know what I mean? Like there, there wasn't, you didn't know much about anything that's going on. Now, you know, like everyone and what they're doing and you know, that the, yeah, the independence seems really hot, man, right now. And it's, uh, it's cool to see, you know what I mean? It goes, uh, a lot of talent out there, opportunities um, to kind of shine and show everybody what they can do. So, you know, it's a, it's a cool time in wrestling right now. And it seems, it seems to be like, you know, it seems like everybody's doing very well um, for the most part, you know what I mean? So it's cool to see everybody being able to do what they wanted to do, you know, because it was, it was, you know, when we first started, it was like, we had our, we had our area, the new England area, coming up but like to us you know we would drive to new york and jersey or pittsburgh and we would make all these like different drives and stuff but like it seems like there's just more opportunities out there which is uh which is cool for everyone you know so it's it's, uh that's cool to see yeah but i think it's i think it's the hottest it's ever been right now Mm -hmm. yeah and uh, i think uh the rise of um Prosecutors keys too has helped, like uh, with merchandise, because I've never seen so much. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. Independent uh, yeah, yeah, merchandise. Yeah, I have so a really cool. key store, and uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that that's I'm grateful for that too. That's awesome. It, it you know, it helps out everybody. You know, so I think that's a great thing. Now, um, I don't know if you'll be on it up, but what are your thoughts of uh, All In and uh, it's selling out so fast? I fantastic. You know what I mean, like that, like. Like that, that's, you know, unheard of, you know what I mean? So like when I saw the news for that, I was just kind of like, wow, you know, that's just, that's great. You know what I mean? They, they, they put something out there and they got exactly what they wanted out of it. And like, you can't ask for any more than that. And, you know, like more power to them. That's, that's, you know, that's fantastic news. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To, To sell out that many tickets, and that minimum of time is just like unheard of. So, you know what I mean? It was, it was really, really cool to see. And like, they were so happy that they did it. And, you know, it was awesome. It was very, very cool. Yeah. And I think it's, it's uh, you know, it, it just really made like a, a strong impact in the wrestling industry. And I think that's cool. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. What's really weird to me is there's a group of, of wrestling fans who, uh, like in my own uh, Facebook group, the in your head group and uh, all over the internet, that are like mad about it, and uh, I don't understand how you could be like a wrestling fan and be like upset that uh, uh, from you know these guys are doing well, uh, even if it's not like a wrestling yeah. you want to see. You think you'd be happy for, for you know, and it's good for wrestling in general. Yeah, man, but you know it's just kind of but you know there's a lot of people that like don't want to see others do well just because they're not doing well, whatever the case may be. But uh-huh. you know what I mean? That that's on them. You know what I mean? If you want yeah. to live a miserable life then cool, but you know, I think <laughs> right. it's cool. I, I thought it was really I cool agree. that they were able to pull that off. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we, we all know anyone's on the internet. There's a lot of negativity out there. If you dwell on it, you probably just go crazy. Yeah. You just got to kind of not pay attention to it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, any negativity thing, like, you just kind of, kind of like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, it has, you know, all that stuff, it really has nothing to do with, with you, so who cares? You know what I mean? Let them, let them continue to be, live a miserable life, <laughs> whoever it is on the internet that wants to be negative, you know? There's a lot of it, but you just got to kind of ignore the negativity and kind of just keep moving on. Mm-hmm. It's a waste of energy to kind of sit there and, like, dwell on it, you know? Yeah, I agree. Now, uh, from doing the show, uh, a lot of the veteran wrestlers will talk about ribs. Uh, is that something that still happens in wrestling? Do you guys still play ribs on each other? Um, eh, I, I haven't really been uh-huh. involved with too many. You know, you know, you know, you know. We just, not, I haven't really ran into any. <laughs> like, you know what I right. mean? But you know, there's 
there's funny stuff here and there, but you know, I wouldn't say anything like, you know, serious or huge, but you yeah, know, it's not like Mr. Fuji level things or anything. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. I haven't encountered anything like too too crazy yet. Uh-huh. Which I probably for the best, because even though I like to hear the stories, and I really think about it, like I I wouldn't want to be part of that. I mean I don't want someone feed me my dog or, or putting uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. feces in food or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, funny stuff. Okay. Yeah. There's uh, some questions here on my Facebook. Uh, Vlad wants to know how did you ev- Oh, that's a weird question. How did you evolve from uh, stable with matching gear to your individual characters? Um. So uh, for me, uh, like like I kind of covered before um the horror king is who i am like vinnie marcellia um i love horror films i love everything about their genre outside of wrestling so basically when we started i was still in the mix of kind of like oh i don't know my 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 in-ring identity was slowly starting to evolve very slowly at the time so when we first debuted, we had like the matching stuff and I was just like, okay, it was all right. It was cool. You know what I mean? But I, I continue to kind of, you know, like that, like they said, evolve. Um, and just kind of more bringing into what I was comfortable with and what I loved outside of, of the ring into the ring. So, you know, it kind of just started adding, you know, elements and layers to myself. And there's pretty much what you see. Um, when I come out there, it's everything I, I love, you know, um, I love my daughter, my wife, <clears throat> Tara and wrestling together. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. so like those, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a natural thing for me. It's, it's everything I love. So it was like, you know, I was just thought, you know, man, it would be cool to have this, you know, and this and the ring and this and there's kind of now there's so many layers to it, you know, but the horror King is, um, you know, when you, what you see out there is exactly who I am, you know, nothing is forced, nothing is unnatural for me. Um, that's exactly who I am and what I love. Um, and I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to bring that, uh, into pro wrestling because I feel, you know, I've been to horror conventions and whatnot, and I've, I've met a lot of wrestling fans that go to horror conventions. So, it's cool to know that there's um, somewhat of a connection, um, Mm -hmm. you know, with fans that love horror and wrestling. So, you know, it's, you know, just like myself, you know, so it's, it's cool. It's cool to see that. Um, But yeah, the horror King is, is Vinny Marcellia, exactly who, who he is in real life. You know, like I said, if you walk through my house, it's like a horror, horror museum, (laughs) you know, when uh, Uh, Taven and TK have to crash here, sometimes they're terrified. (laughs) Do you have a personal favorite uh, piece of memorabilia? One that means the most to you? Um, yeah, probably. Like, we have an original Michael Myers mask from the original oh, film. Um, yeah, it's in, like, a glass case. Uh, that one's there, but I have to say the um, Alex Winter jacket from The Lost Boy that has, all, like, the patches oh, and all, like, the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one is probably my my ultimate um prize possession there uh because you know when i was a kid i would see him with it and i was like man i want that jacket i want to get that jacket i want to get that jacket and here we are 32 years old and it's on my wall in a shadow box so that's one of those things that like i always wanted and i Mm -hmm. like how do i get it you know (laughs) but then like once you you know in this day and age with the internet and everything and like they have like auctions and stuff online Mm -hmm. and wherever you can find that stuff and uh so, you know, it's kind of cool to have one of those. So that's probably yeah. the best one I have. Yeah. Is there anything out there that you're looking for? Uh, not currently. Not currently. I'm actually like, we're, I'm redoing my, uh, I'm redoing a lot of my house. So that's pretty much the focus right now. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. Uh, Tony wants to know, uh, watching him last week, I kept wondering how the hell does he keep that Michael Myers mask on his knee pad? from coming off or at least tearing. <laughs> I assume I, that's not the original Michael Myers mask that you have on your knee. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, Yeah. Oh man. Imagine that. What a nightmare. <laughs> I would be able to do that. Um, 
Well, basically, I, I actually, all that stuff that you see on my knee pads and my kick pads and whatnot, I actually have, uh, I hand sewed that myself. So that mask is actually held on by like a really thick thread on my knee pad. Um, and I pretty much did all the stitch, the cross stitching and stuff myself. So a lot of the stuff that you see is um, made by me. Uh, Taven's vest I actually made as well. Um, oh, wow. So. I pretty much, yeah, I pretty much uh, hand stitched all that stuff myself. Where did you? Uh, this is a weird question. But where did you learn to uh, to sew? I I actually took sewing in uh, home ec in eighth grade, and I always joke right. that I use that more, way more off, way, way more than like uh, physics and uh, like the advanced courses I took. Uh, um, and just kind of, I just kind of learned it naturally. I mean, I've taken those classes too, of course. Uh -huh. Um, but I, I just kind of learned it naturally. Uh, you know, you can, you can learn anything on YouTube or whatever it is. And, uh, so I kind of learned it naturally. Um, I'm kind of working right now and trying to learn more of the machine. Um, but it was just kind of like a natural thing that I was able to pick up. I, I was, a you know, I, I'm a pretty creative guy. Um, I got into tattooing for a while. I was before I started like wrestling, um, full time, like, God, I was tattooing locally like years back, maybe like 2012-ish, maybe. Um, but I was doing an apprenticeship for a while. So I'm, a, I'm just like a all-around kind of creative guy, and I just love to do all that kind of stuff. So kind of learn naturally on my own. Yeah. And I, I think the Hardy boys uh, used to sell their own stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Matt Hardy used to sell his own gear. Yep. Yeah. It's just a good skill to have, especially mm -hmm. in this industry, you know, it's cool. Because, like, yeah. you can, like, I can envision things the way I want them, but somebody else might not have that same artistic view on it. So it might be hard for them to kind of recreate what you're talking about, what you know, mm -hmm. what you want to create in your mind. So it's just easier to do it yourself. Uh, when you mentioned tattoos, what was your first tattoo? Um, I have like two, uh, like kanji symbols on my forearm that I got when I was 18, <laughs> you know, in a rush to get a tattoo, okay. um, you know what I mean? In a rush to get a tattoo. So that was my first one. Um, I, I got so many, man. My favorite piece is probably my chest. Um, it's the lost boys boardwalk with like, oh, the four That's skulls. Sweet. Yeah. 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 It's the, it's the boardwalk with the four skulls that represent the vampires and has like a stereo in the middle. It's like, you know, death by stereo. And then like, it has like two stakes going through roses. Most people can't pick up <laughs> on what it actually is, but that's exactly what it is. Um, and then I'm working on like a, uh, um, like a classic horror sleeve on my leg. Um, so far I got Frankenstein. We're going to go move on to Bride of Frankenstein. So it's going to be like all like the black and white classic horror films. Yeah. Um, where like, you know, horror pretty much originated from. Um, so I'm excited to finish those as well. That's very cool. I was, if I, I don't have any tattoos, if I got tattoos, that was actually what I would have done with like a sleeve of, uh, the classic universal monsters. Yes. Yes. Yep. That, those are awesome. I love all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which uh, is real. Is uh, another cheap plug for the, uh, without your head, my, uh, horror website was uh, the big highlight for me was uh, interviewing Ben Chapman, the original uh, creature from the Black Lagoon uh, before yeah, he passed yeah, away. Yeah, yeah, And having him on yeah. the show, that was like a huge, uh, huge deal for me. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Uh, let's see, Bruce Briscoe wants to know, what uh, is your favorite horror movie, which you already had? Oh, no, that, I'm oh, sorry. Let me repeat this. What is your favorite horror movie, and if he could play one character, who would it be? You already mentioned the horror movie, but... If you could play a character. Oh. If I could play a character, who would it be? Uh, it would be Otis from Devil's Rejects. <laughs> like, it's just, there's, you know, either that or Michael Myers from Halloween. Um, just because, you know, that story in general is creepy, and I just think the character is creepy. Um, but Otis, the fact that there's some humor to him, um, you know, I would love to, to kind of like, if I could ever have that role of Otis, <laughs> you know, uh, right. if it could have been me, uh, that would have been a fantastic role. Uh, I just think it's a great role. I think there's, he's like, I mean, that role screams psychopath, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just cool. There's, there's humor to him. There's violence to him. There's, you know, everything in this one guy. So it's kind of cool, but 
that's probably one of the characters I'd, I'd, I'd pick him or Michael Myers, you know what I mean? Because I, I just love the story of Michael Myers, but um, yeah, probably, probably Otis. Are you looking forward to the new Halloween? Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I can't wait for the trailer for that. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Nick Castle back on cast, Jamie Lee Curtis. It's going to be cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just recently interviewed Nick Castle, which was another big highlight of doing the show. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. How'd that go? Pretty good. Yeah, it was very cool. It was a uh, video interview at uh, a Mad Monster uh, horror convention. But yeah, it's uh, awesome. and he, he talked about you know playing the uh, the role again. He didn't give away too much information, probably because he can. But right, right, right. Only how cool. much he can. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's cool. That's great. Yeah. So uh, where can people follow you online? Not like your house. Uh, you could <laughs> you could follow me on Twitter at the Horror King VM. You could follow me on Instagram at the Horror King official, and you can follow me on Facebook at Vinny Marcellia official, which I always say this, and I'll continue to say it, that I need to change uh, my Facebook so it matches everything else, because <laughs> that mm-hmm. bothers me. Um, but that's where you can find me on all the social media outlets. Um, and I recently started a YouTube channel um, where I do some um, kind of like a, a live uh, horror movie uh, review uh, called the Vinny Horror Picture Show, which is going to have like a bunch of different wrestlers, actors on there. So it's uh, it's really cool if you want to check it out. It's funny. Uh, it's not totally serious. So you can have a good time watching it. Um, that's another thing on YouTube there. But that's where you can find me. Very cool. I'll have to check that out because I'm a big horror movie fan. Yeah, man. Please. Very cool. Well, it's been uh, it's been great to have you on here. Yeah, it's, it's actually been awesome. Love talking with you. Yeah, it great. Dude. It'll be cool to have you back sometime. Maybe come back. A, you can be come on the horror show sometime if you want. We can talk about uh, horror movies. Yeah, maybe we like closer to like Halloween or something. We could do something that makes sense. That would be a lot of fun. All right, sounds good. All right, man. Thanks for doing this. In your head, online. Dot com. That's the important stuff. Now, the most important thing is you're listening to Jake the Snake Roberts. Don't you ever forget that. Or you just never know what might show up.